Okay, I'd like to welcome you to our September 14th meeting of the Placer County Planning Commission. And so would you all, oh, uh, would you all join me in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, well, thank you for attending today. Let me see. We'll do a roll call first. Mr. Curry? Here. Mr. Haber? Here. Mr. Rokucci? Here. Mr. Nader? Here. Uh, Mr. Sevison appears to be absent. Mr. Moss? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Thank you. Good morning, Okay, Jay, everyone. we'll turn it over to you for a minute or so. All right. Good morning, uh, commissioners. I'll, I'll, I'll just wait. Park in the next county. Park in the <laughs> need to get a bigger parking lot. Commissioner Curry is feeling much better right now because he just snuck in right behind you, so we don't want to let that go. Uh, anyway, welcome. Uh, so uh, since our last meeting, I really don't have anything to report, so I want to just kind of jump into the calendar for the remainder of the year. Uh, the next scheduled meeting was going to be September 28th, and so we're going to cancel that meeting. Uh, so the next time we'll actually meet is going to be October 12th. And that's going to be down here in Auburn. Uh, we have a few items lined up for that agenda. And then the second meeting in October is going to be the 26th in Tahoe. Uh, that's uh, all confirmed. And then after that, we're going to have a one meeting in November, beginning of November, and then a meeting in uh, beginning of December. So we have four, four left for the year. And I imagine uh, you know those four meetings will be... Uh, relatively full agendas so that's all I got which is which is probably quite surprising for you all uh, let's see I do want to thank uh, Rob Samman for being here today uh, filling in for Karen uh, Schwab I'm going to turn it over to him real quick just to introduce uh, himself and uh, and some of his staff so Thank you, EJ. Uh, Commissioners, Rob Salmon, a Senior Deputy County Counsel in the County Counsel's Office, filling in for Karen today. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Elise Nelson, a Deputy County Counsel in our office. She'll probably be seeing more of Elise coming out, assisting Karen uh, coming up. Thank you. Okay, well, welcome. Thank you. And then one more announcement uh, or introduction. Uh, I'd like to have uh, Bennett Smithart stand up. Uh, so Bennett, he is our newest associate planner. Uh, as you remember, at our last meeting, we uh, introduced uh, quite a few new uh, folks that are working for us. So Bennett, uh, he comes from Marietta, Georgia, uh, quite, quite a ways from here. Uh, he grew up in Tennessee. He has a lot of uh, planning experience in both the public and private sector. Uh, he is uh, right now working on getting his la uh, landscape architect's license. Uh, we don't have a landscape architect in planning but we think that would be great benefit to us when he when he uh, uh, makes that accomplishment uh, one interesting story uh, Bennett actually called to see if he could come work early uh, he and his wife uh, were surprised by a uh, early delivery three week early delivery of their first child so uh, he gave gave me notice and I said absolutely you can come work early <laughs> so anyway so I want to congratulate him on, uh, congratulate him on that uh, we're glad to have you here Bennett and uh, look forward to you working for us. So. Okay. Yeah, well, welcome. And you may have gotten out of Georgia just at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that concludes my report. Uh, question here? Um, I want to follow up on what Larry just said a few minutes ago. I'm noticing that the parking lot is getting fuller and fuller, and it's a little more challenging to find a place to park. Is that because the building's filling up, or uh, it, it is filling up? So you know, as you know, you know this is the Community Development Resource Agency, but we also have Public Works and Facilities and Environmental Engineering here. We have HHS here. Uh, I know in our office, you know, we're down to the last couple office spaces. Uh, so I think the whole building is like that. Uh, so with all the recent hires and you know finally staffing up from the you know the recession, uh, we're we're getting getting pretty full so are you asking for a parking space well no <laughs> <laughs> so i won't i won't mention that when the board of supervisors come to this uh use this meeting room they they, they actually have reserved spaces so uh we want to make sure everybody can park here but i know that wasn't the reason for your no house. well my concern <laughs> is we don't have very many people here today but yeah. if we have some big uh, issues before us. We do. We're going to be really challenged to find a parking place out there right now. 
So um, I just, I don't know how to resolve that. Maybe you have some ideas of where people can go. I know there's some uh, where the uh, old apartment complex used to be down this way that right. people can park right. down there. It's a little bit of a hike, but they can park. Well, there. I started parking down there because I think the hike is about the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'll come, I'll come up with something. Just a thought. It may not be carpooling, but it, it may be something. There was <laughs> at the very beginning when we took this, we had parking out here somehow. For commissioners? Well, that, that's I like well, well, one thing I can tell you is uh, the front parking space, one change we did make a few years back was to have customer parking right up front. So, you know, we wouldn't have employees sitting there. So when, you know, customers do come in, they have a front, you know, you know, as long as there are enough spaces, you know, a parking space right in front. So uh, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> September 28th. That, that meeting will be canceled. Twenty-eight. Eight. The fourteenth. So add fourteen. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, it's canceled. Thank yes. you. So, EJ, do you have dates in November and December? So. Uh, I do. So uh, the only meeting in November is on November 9th. and then December December fourteenth. Sue will certainly correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. And our right. only Tahoe meeting is the October twenty-sixth meeting, right? I know. Pretty. Shocking after last year. Last year we went, what, seven trips up there at least? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. So, not a lot of driving time for us this year. So, yeah, you'll probably be invited back next winter. Yes. Not about February. January, February, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let me see. At this time, I'll open it up for public comment. If there's somebody out there that would like to make a public comment, that is not related to anything on the agenda today. You're welcome to step forward. I see somebody making motions. Is that a public comment? Oh, that was a bid. Huh? That was a bid. No, it's, I, we're on the agenda. Oh, okay. Okay, well, thank you. So, uh, no public comment. We'll move on to the consent agenda, which is uh, a extension of time for the Brady Estates. And so, uh, unless somebody wants to pull that off of the consent calendar, I would take a motion. Make a motion that we uh, accept items A and B on the consent agenda. Second. Okay, roll call. Mr. R. Curry? Yes. Mr. Haber? Yes. Mr. Rokucci? Yes. Mr. Nader? Yes. Mr. Sevison? Yes. Mr. Moss? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on. It looks like we're in good time to uh, the Morgan Creek fencing and pedestrian gate project. And so, uh, Christopher Smith, it's all yours to start us off. Good morning, Commissioners. Chris Schmidt with the Planning Services Division. Before you today is something a little unusual. It's a proposal from the Morgan Creek Community Association to add some pedestrian gates and some wrought iron fencing um, throughout their community out in West Placer. So the project location, Morgan Creek Golf and Country Club, is located south of Vineyard Road, uh, north of PFE Road, and east of Willerga Road, and a little bit west of Cucurilla Road. It's on both sides of Dry Creek. The project site itself is a PD development, so a little lower density north of the creek, a little higher density to the south, a mixed bag of residential agriculture and PD zoning surrounding. Uh, some typical fencing out there today, the photo on the top left is a, one of the proposed locations for a pedestrian gate. It's currently an open walkway. And what you see on the bottom right is what's out there today is with the right iron fencing. So their proposal will match what currently exists out there as far as fencing design. A little background on the Morgan Creek community. It was originally approved back in 1995 for 579 dwelling units in the golf course. In 2003, the county's internal DRC, Design Review Committee, approved a fencing plan for the project. So what we're doing is modifying that fencing exhibit and the fencing plan that was originally approved. A uh, couple more items. 
uh, happened uh, recently in 2013. The Planning Commission approved automobile gates, vehicle gates, at three of the subdivision's entrances. That project is currently moving forward. It's very close to construction. And late last year, your commission approved a seven-lot addition to the Morgan Creek community near the clubhouse. That project just came in for plan check uh, yesterday. So this shows you where the fences are going to are proposed. There's uh, three pedestrian, or sorry, three uh, areas where the open fencing would be constructed. That's shown in the red, and then six new pedestrian gates are proposed. So these gates will be um, electronic. There will be a solar system attached to them so that they can be unlocked from dawn to dusk. So that's one of the conditions of approval, that pedestrian access will be maintained through the community, ultimately connecting to the Dry Creek um, trail, multi-use trail that runs on the south side of, of Dry Creek. So most of these segments are around the school site. Is this uh, Dry Creek School site up here was never built, so they're proposing to fence in those gaps up here. These are pedestrian um, walkways to the golf course in the internal trail system. This is a pedestrian uh, walkway that they're proposing to close off, so it'll be a solid fence here. There's pedestrian access over here and then over here, and this is another pedestrian gate here. Just a rundown of where the fences are located. Uh, we, we took this to the West Placer MAC uh, last night. Uh, didn't have any public comment, and the MAC recommended approval of uh, 3 to 0. I should also, also mention that the HOA did an internal vote, and it was approved by 83% of homeowners in the community. So, with that, staff recommends the Planning Commission determine the project is exempt from CEQA, approve a conditional use modification, including the revised fencing exhibit for the Morgan Creek Golf and Country Club. And these recommendations are subject to the modified conditions of approval and findings found in the staff report. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Christopher. Is there a representative of the applicant here? If you'd like to say a few words, you're welcome to now. Hi, Commissioners. Good morning. Thank you for your time and hearing our item. My name is Ruth Langford, and I'm here on behalf of the Morgan Creek Homeowners Association. And um, we appreciate uh, Chris Schmidt's work with us on this project, and we um, support his recommendations and the findings in his report. So um, unless there's any questions for me. What was the, what's the main purpose for adding the gates? Just access to the trails? So the main purpose is um, back in 2013, um, there was an approval for auto gates. Um, right now, the gates at each entrance are manned by a person, and that's become financially not feasible to maintain having 24-7 monitoring. And so um, the auto gates have been approved and will be installed. And so what we were noticing is there's little gaps and pieces within the community that are still open. So we're trying to provide overall security to the community while maintaining um, the pedestrian walkways throughout the day when it's daylight hours. So this is just kind of filling in some little parts and pieces where there was some open. Um, and I think there was just a general concern of safety um, and people coming into backyards and there's been some thefts and different things like that that raise concern by the homeowners. How, are you, how do you intend to control the gates? Are you going to have somebody open and close them? Or are they just going to be open all the time? Um, the, the pedestrian gates in the locations shown here um, are going to be solar powered. And so there's um, a photo cell that operates so it automatically clicks them open as soon as daylight and then um, closes them as soon as dusk. So um, that will, it won't be manually controlled. It will be controlled by a photo cell. And so that way, they you know, will definitely be open during daylight hours. Can, can the residents, uh, here, right here, uh, can the residents uh, access those gates um, after sundown, or will they be permanently closed? These ones, they will not be able to, and okay. because we don't have any permanent power source going to it, it's all solar powered, and the mechanism to create like a fob type system is not really feasible in those areas. However, at the entrances to the community, which there are three, there are pedestrian gates there, 
that will be tied into permanent power that will have a FOB system for okay. the residents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let me see, now we'll open it to the public. <clears throat> Hi there. I'm Candy Cost Herbert, um, president of the Dry Creek Estates Homeowners Association. We are these properties here to the west. That's us. And um, there's 20 properties all together. So I represent them. I'm here with Debbie Bell, who, uh, along with myself, are one of two out of the five original members of the MAC in this area. Very first MAC. Very first MAC. Um, I was unable to go to the meeting last night because of prior commitment, so that's why we're here. Um, we're very concerned about this because uh, I don't know if you know the background. Originally, this development was put in as a planned unit development was supposed to benefit the community. Well, so far we haven't had too many benefits, but we worked for 10 years on the general plan and to prevent flooding from people, I should say, building on the floodplain. Because the original plan, instead of having all of this lovely golf course and open space, had the houses right up to the creek. So we worked really hard. And I'm on a really high hill compared to the rest of the area. So I'm not going to flood. But I was trying to prevent, along with Debbie, our new neighbors coming in to flood. Not to flood, I should say. So, you know, we really worked hard on this. We worked hard to get the uh, development to fit in with the community. We asked for the open fencing so it wouldn't look blocked off. We asked for berms open spaces, really fought hard for it, thought we had a really good plan, plan was approved. And then, all of a sudden, we found a guard gate and thought, well, my property adjoins this property, how could there be a guard gate without me being notified that something had changed? So we called the county and the county informed us that they had told everybody within 400 feet of the gate. Within 400 feet of the gate on the PFE roadside is another developer. He didn't care. I don't know about the other people on the other side. I know is, you know, irregardless, we were never notified. So we never had a comment period. We felt very, very deceived by the county. But we're realists. We know that nobody's going to take the gate, gate away. The vehicle gates are still there. What we're now concerned with is the county blocking more public access. We're supposed to be in the area of benefit for these developments. We're getting better roads, uh, parks. So far, we have blocked access and lots of traffic. So you can see, though, though we're not the 500 some odd units in there. We're 100% for public access. At my property, um, I sit there at night on my back porch. Even in very dark, there are people walking up and down the golf club, club trails. It happens all the time. So to say, oh, we're going to put a gate in and we're going to lock it, well, those people need to get out, especially if they're from the community and not from the internal development. So that concerns me. Um, if this is ostensibly for security, I have my best friend. She patrolled the American River Parkway for 32 years. She said crime happened in the parking lot. Crime happened where there was easy access to vehicles because you're not going to be carrying the television down the, you know, down the trail. You're going to be carrying little stuff if you carry anything. Um, I hear that now, because my, one of my questions was, was the gate going to be locked? And obviously, it's going to be locked at sunset. And what if you're inside and you want to get out? How are you going to do that? So I'm, you know, I personally am objecting to it. I only was able to contact about half of my um, association members. They were opposed to any further restriction. And um, 
want to have you that consideration. I'm sorry I missed the MAC meeting. Any questions? I'd be happy. Worked on the, like I said, we worked on the plan for 10 years, and we thought we had a good one. And if you happen to go by Morgan Creek, and you look across the street at the other development on the south side, you can see beautiful landscape berm. They did it perfectly the way we asked them to. And that development is really a jewel for Placer County. Morgan Creek has been changing things left and right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a question for you. I have a question? Yeah, a couple of questions, actually. So to understand, your main concern is access for yourself, not so much the security part of it. Is that right? Yes. OK. Because based on this map, where you're located, there doesn't seem to be any kind of gate. So. Oh, yeah. I, I, we're quite aware of that. Yeah. So what's, but, what's changing for you now? Well, I, I'm not all that self-centered. I have lots of people. I have people in this development here. Mm -hmm. Like to cross into the development, and it's difficult to do that. So, am I understanding correctly that if it was up to you, there'd be a gate on your side for access? Uh, well, if it was up to me, um, we'd have gates on all sides. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So, because yeah. especially, yeah, but not the kind of gate you're talking about. Because you look at Vineyard Road there, where. Um, you have this side here. Where, where is there any public access over here? Right. You have access right here at Dry Creek itself. I have to drive around to get to this. There aren't any sidewalks or anything along here. Um, Candace, so Candace can, I have you, can I have you come back to the mic? Sorry. I'll give you a pointer. Ah, oh, that's OK. But you know, there, there's very little access. Mm. And, so, uh, just uh, have you, um, your association, um, spoken with the Morgan Creek folks about this since this was implemented? We don't have any contact with Morgan Creek. I got a little thing in the mail uh, the other day asking if we wanted to uh, join some net thing of some sort, but not being uh, particularly computer happy. I mean, we, our compu my computer and I look at each other, but that's about it. Um, so, no, they haven't uh, approached us. They haven't discussed it with us. Okay. You know, they've never contacted us, to my knowledge, and I'm president for the last 15 years, so. Okay, thank you. Aside, okay. aside from the, the trail that goes along the creek, mm -hmm. the pedestrian trail, what is it you want access to? The, the creek, all this, I mean, besides getting down here, there's no, you know, official way to get through here. There's, there is along this side, this lovely, lovely thing. Sorry, back to the mic, right? I'm not used to using a pointer. We didn't have them in school. That side there, that's actually a sewer access road. And uh, that's blocked off here, so nobody can get in. Um, and that's, I guess it belongs to the county. So we can't, I'm sorry, it's on this side. It's where it is. That's my side is over here. This side here, that, that's completely blocked off, so we can't get to it. The residents in here, that's a brand new development. I'm sure they wouldn't mind being able to get in. And what you're trying to get access to is, is the parkway. Is the parkway, correct? Yeah. So there currently isn't any access on any side of Morgan Creek for you to get into the, does the bike trail, does it end right there on that line? No, the bike trail goes along the creek, right right here. So where does this, it, where's the closest access for you to the bike trail? For me? Yeah, it would for, that, be, for that group it, of It would be down here. So no place up by where it says on Wallegra, no place up at there, the there's, there's a spot here, but um, I don't know if you've driven down Willurga, but I would not drive down Willurga with a bike. I'm not that brave. Because there is a park here. There's access into the park. 
but that is not a good place to go along Willurga Avenue, you know, Willurga Road. The bike trail doesn't end, right? It goes all the way to Allegra? It goes from here all the way to Cucriola. So what, I'm, I'm still a little confused, is there a fence or something that you can't get to? Yes. So there's no public access from the west end of Morgan Creek in your subdivision, in that bottom subdivision? Correct. The there's, trail. there's no, Today. there is no access. It seems a little odd. Yeah, it, it's, it's completely closed off. And, and like I said, at night, we hear all, people all the time. I have horses, so I'm, you know, I listen to some, you know, if someone's loose dog can go through the fence or whatever. And so I listen to, you know, what's happening. And, um, you know, there's people walking up and down that trail all the time. I'm assuming that most of them belong to the development, but... You know, I, if you access the bike trail from, from Cook Riolo Road, oh, it, it's open 24 hours, right? You can walk through there all yes. the way across to Morgan Creek and all the way to Wallegra. Yes, if, if you're brave enough to go down, down PFE to Cook Riolo, That's then I there's... Mean. I'm just talking about the access yeah. point. From that yep. access point, you can go all the way across. It. Yeah, you can, go, you can go from here. There's a couple different trails all the way to Balerga. Okay. Let me, let me understand that this this proposal does not block that access that uh, Commissioner Arcuri just referred to and that you pointed to from Cook Riola all the way over to Wallegra. It'll still be open. As far as I know. Yeah. Okay, so that's so there's no proposed fencing or gates that'll be blocked at night or anything like that. So you'll still be able to go at midnight if you would want to. Well, but these people up here can't go through if you block their access. These people, you know, here, if they're stuck in the golf course, they certainly can't go back. So if you're talking about access for the community through things that they're used to going through, then you're blocking it off. Well, what gate, what gate is going in based on this proposal? that is going to restrict you more than you're restricted today? These, uh, these guys here. Okay. And these guys here. Because if you, you know, like uh, my husband frequently walks down the creek, he comes back through the development and up and around. So he basically, he basically goes like this through the development and back around. And now he won't be able to if it happens to get dark on him. And it gets dark. So, so the access away from the from the uh, bike trail is being blocked is that what's what you're saying because yeah. you just put a loop okay yeah because there are you know there are golf cart trails that people walk on there's you know there's it's not just the one bike trail that goes through there you've got you've got you can see this little trail here it goes along there it goes across there's a the creek crossing there well, there isn't supposed to be public access to the golf course, though, right? Well, the public is using the golf course. But it's not. It's not it, that's private property. I, am, I really don't know. It was supposed to be able to have paths around it, and it does, and people use them. Well, paths around it, perhaps, but there shouldn't be public access through the golf course. Well, as far as I know, people aren't walking across, but they're walking along. They're, because they're walking here all the time. And I don't live up here, so I'm assuming people are walking along there, too. You know? I mean, I, I really don't know. There's this path here that goes across the creek. The only way to get across the creek, unless you go out to Cook Riola Road, is to use that path. You know, I'm really puzzled because it looks like if... Uh, that path along the creek mm -hmm. is going to be open all the time. It yes. doesn't have a gate on it. And it looks like there are places, you know, people could walk all the way around the golf course, too. Well, if it's without gated, being you can't restricted. get out. Huh? But you can't get out. <laughs> well, where's the, uh, where's the gate? Okay, well, that answers that question. And they're shaking their head, yes. Well, okay. Close it down at night. Okay, I guess I'm not understanding which areas. 
are blocked off on this map by the gates that are being proposed. Well, access up here access. would be blocked off, right? What's that? After dark. After, After dark. dark. And, and, you know, to be honest with you, I don't really want people walking behind my property late at night, but they do it. And, and I'm thinking it's probably people from the development itself. I don't think it's too many outsiders. But thank you for letting me know that they're going to let people out again because I know people go down there and misjudge, you know, how long that mile, you know, trip takes them. So. Okay, let me back up a little bit. You're saying along we're... Well, Lurga Road, there's a park. Yeah. So Does you that can park drive. not have any parking in it or anything? Yeah, there's parking. And so people could <coughs> go there and access the trail from that park. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. The whole idea, though, of putting a community with trails through it is to keep people off the road. So you don't really want people driving to the road, I mean driving to the parking lot to access the trail. <laughs> You want the surrounding community to be able to access the trail. At least that was my vision, is that people, the kids going to school could walk across it. That, um, you know, instead of commuting from one side to another, you're not driving, you're actually walking. And, uh, you know, that, that was the whole purpose of it, is to let people through. But... You know, I mean, I can understand their security concerns. I also don't know, like, who all lives in there, you know? We have, we have a, a problem with the community near us, but, um, you know, they drive down to steal things. They don't walk in to steal things. So. Well, Chairman, I, I might make a suggestion when, once this public comment session is over that we have Chris come up and okay. just clarify the access points and the hours that those will be opened and closed again, just so everybody's clear on what's being proposed. And which areas are serviced by the uh, gates? And, the, and also the difference between the Dry Creek Greenway corridor and also, you know, the, the subdivision yeah. okay. access. Okay, that'd be a good. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have another commenter. Step forward, please. Good morning. Uh, I'm Debbie Bell. I live across the street uh, from Morgan Creek on PFE Road. Um, as Candy said, I was a member of the original MAC that was formed for the community, and we worked extensively for a good 10 years on the community plan, the general plan, and worked extensively on Morgan Creek. One of the things I think Candy was trying to bring to your attention and point out, um, which is probably a moot point at this, uh, at this date, this project was specifically denied as a gated community. It was not allowed to go forward as a gated community. At one of the meetings that we attended toward the end before it was approved, one of the supervisors spoke and stated that because it's a planned unit development, it must bring a benefit to the community and that by gating the community, you were bringing no benefit rather locking the community out. Somehow or another, the project was approved, not as a gated community, got approved, and then without the rest of the community finding out, or community activists, if you will, a conditional use permit was issued somewhere along the line shortly after approval to allow them to have the guard towers and stop traffic coming in, questioning people, writing license plates down, and deciding whether you could or could not come through. The, I think what Candy's getting at is whether or not there's going to be further restriction to the community's use, the community of Dry Creek as a whole, not Morgan Creek. The trails are not accessible to you unless you drive around. For years and years and years, all, all the time that we've been there, 30, 35 years, for many people, more than that, you could just simply ride your horse across, walk across. We wanted to try to preserve the rural nature of the community and try to find a way to blend it with, with the development that was coming in. We wanted Morgan Creek to be a really nice project, which it ultimately wound up being. 
but it was never intended to be a gated community it or it was not allowed to be a gated community. So I think what we're trying to see happen here is that there's no further restriction for po people moving across. When the community was designed, we made sure there was um, certain areas of parking made available for the general public coming through because the narrow, streets are very narrow and you know you really can't park along the roadway. So there were turnouts made. And a conversation was had specifically so that, that would allow someone that might want to come in and, and walk through the community. A precedent that I'm very concerned about with this, uh, with there not being allowed to be gated to begin with, and with that being cast aside, is it sets a precedent for everyone else to come in and say, well, we want a gate now too. We want to be gated. So one of the premier areas in Placer County is Granite Bay. I'm sure we can all agree to that. But what happens when you drive through Granite Bay? All you see is gated community after gated community after gated community. You can't stop. You have to just drive through. And we didn't want to see that happen in our community. It's a beautiful area, and we wanted to try to see that preserved and for the entire community to be able to utilize those areas. So it's, it's a good mile and a half to drive around to get access to those creeks. And it's very pleasant to be able to just walk through. My conversations on a slightly different note uh, pertaining to the safety of the development, my conversations with the sheriff's office of crime and that type of thing taking place is that it has been coming from within. I was told that by a sheriff's officer. The murder that happened a couple of years back at some birthday party that was going on inside the development would have occurred gated or not gated. The people that attended the party would have been allowed in. It happened from people that were already there and guests of that. So all of us in the community want to see crime controlled and, and some controls over that. And I don't mind them having access to the trails or anything else through the community, but as far as those being shut down and restricting the rest of the community to have access or to travel through the community is something I object to very strenuously. I, I spent a great deal of time and effort, sacrificed my family's time, my health, and then somewhere along the line, someone took us off the mailing list after we were no longer on the MAC anymore. So this snuck up on us. We didn't get any notification that this was going on. To notify people within 400 feet or 300 feet of where these, the electric gates are going for the vehicle ac vehicular access is just ludicrous. It's ridiculous. Nobody is close enough to know that. And it, it frankly felt like deception to us to all the rest of us, because we didn't get a chance to have any input. We didn't know anything was going on because someone had removed us from those lists. I have since rectified that. Um, but again, as people that work very, very hard on the community plan and on this development and others that came forward, we're feeling rather deceived. I know it's too late to stop the electric gates. I'm sure there's nothing that can be done about that, but we're extremely disappointed about that. We don't want to see that continue or a precedent to be set within the community for that to happen. And we don't want to see any further restriction on our uh, ability as community members to move through. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Questions? OK, thank you. I would also like to state that if any, <clears throat> anyone in the room from Morgan Creek or anywhere else would like to speak with us about the history of how this community was developed and the processes that we went through, um, that we are available. Feel free Thank to contact you. us. Thank you. Okay, anybody else from the public that would like to speak? We have another hand. Okay, come forward. <clears throat> uh, thank you. My name is John Schaefer. I live in Morgan Creek. Uh, I'm on the Homeowners Association Gate Committee as part of this project trying to make this happen. Uh, I'm also a previous board member and board president there at Morgan Creek. Uh, I live uh, in the community right down here. A uh, comment was made earlier that people can't come in and carry away televisions and things like that. Well, two houses down from me uh, several months back, somebody did come into the community late at night, got onto their back patio, took away a large flat screen outdoor TV and their entire patio furniture set and carried it manually out to Willerga Road and stole all that. So that didn't come from within the community, and it certainly is possible to take large objects. We've had uh, an increased amount of uh, 
uh, intrusion into the community, break-ins, burglaries, car break-ins, thefts. Uh, we're in an area where uh, we have no street lights because uh, nobody wanted light pollution in this uh, rural area, which is very pleasant, understandable. Uh, so it tends to be kind of dark. It's an easy place for people to come in and, and wander around at night and do things they shouldn't be doing. Uh, my understanding that the original conditions of approval for the community required that pedestrian access be granted through the streets and trails there down into the Dry Creek Corridor area from dawn to dusk. And the county's site about the Dry Creek Parkway states <clears throat> that the area is open year-round from sunrise to sunset, which again implies to me that during the nighttime the park area is closed and shouldn't be people out there. Uh, regarding access into uh, this whole area here, the trail that runs along Dry Creek, that trail runs along the south side of Dry Creek. So these gates here, they offer no access into this corridor area or the trail unless you want to jump in and wade across the creek from there to get to there, to the uh, trailway. The trailway is always open at this end, as you pointed out. There is a park there with a parking lot. Anybody can park there, and there's even a paved little trail from the parking lot to the, to the uh, trails along Dry Creek. It's always open at the Cook Riolo end, so there's no, no restriction whatsoever added by these gates to traffic, pedestrians, horses, whatever, going back and forth along that area. Uh, as was pointed out, uh, these gates will be, uh, for safety reasons, you will be able to get out of the community, exit through the gates, so nobody's going to get trapped in there. Uh, I don't think there's any hazard regarding that. Uh, and as far as these gates go up here, again, they don't offer any access to this residential area. They don't offer any access down into the trail area because they're on the wrong side of the creek. So they're on the north side of the creek where the trail isn't. So I think what we're doing is entirely consistent with the original conditions of approval, the current conditions of approval. It does not restrict pedestrian access at all during the daylight hours when the park area is open, uh, and it adds to the safety and uh, well-being of the, the community that is experiencing some rise in crime at night in there. So. See, uh, I think where you pointed out your house, <clears throat> that neighborhood is... Uh, Kind of an island in the golf course? Uh, let's see, our, our lot does back onto the golf course, yes. Yeah, you're surrounded by the golf course. We are, well, we're, we're surrounded on this side, and then people on the other side of the street are surrounded by a golf course, yes. And the, and the Dry Creek drainage. And so, uh, and there's a bridge across Dry Creek Over that here. connects with the trail. Yes. Is there a gate there, too? On that bridge, no. No, so there's... You know, for that for that matter, there's access here, even into the community. Late at night, people could walk along the trail and go across the bridge and get into the community. And so they, they were so determined. They'd have access to the whole community from Dry Creek. They would, yeah. Without a gate. That's right. Okay. And and this, these these don't lock down the whole community. They're an impediment to people getting in from these outside peripheral locations where there's not much visibility and people can sift in and out of there very easily at night. When you, uh, have you been on, you've been there since you built your home? A long time. Uh, we've been there since uh, 2009 and the home was new, yes. Was it, was it your understanding when you, when you purchased your home, it should have been in your paperwork, whether this was going to be a gated community or not? Uh, it was our impression that it was going to be a gated community. Uh, we didn't have any documentation, I don't think, that said that, but it was our impression that, that it was going to be gated as was the impression of lots of people that bought in there. Realtors were saying it was going to be gated. And, uh, you know, if you, if you look along Vineyard Road here all the way into the uh, Roseville city border, uh, there are a lot of houses along this road and a lot of houses up these side streets here. Sixty-two percent of those houses have gates on their driveways. Individuals have put gates on their driveways. On, on private property? Though. Yes. So there are lots of gates in the, in the community. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. I can make another comment. Uh, 
usually we just give you one whack at the microphone. If you don't mind, very quickly. The oh, you got to come to the microphone if you're going to do it. I'll give, since we don't have a, It'll be just a moment. filled up stadium. Right, I understand. <laughs> um, the reference to the gates in the community, are those are private residential properties. You can certainly, within the Morgan Creek development, um, have a gate to your own property if you wish. These are private homes that have these, these gates, including myself. Okay. That's different than gating your entire subdivision. understand. Yeah, Thank I think you. we heard that. <clears throat> okay, is that it from the public comment? Okay, well, we'll give that applicant a chance. If you'd like to address anything that's come up, you're sure welcome. Um, I think Mr. Schaefer addressed quite a few of the um, items, but one thing I did want to say, if I can work this, this number three right here, <clears throat> this is a walking path that actually goes really into nowhere, and there's a steep drop-off on the other side. I think originally there was going to be some kind of connection to the golf course. Um, but there is a, a trail right here that's a golf cart trail. So that's why we're taking this out. We don't want people to get hurt, and we're going to encourage them to use this one here. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to clarify that. And then also up here, uh, this is an open field, and it's got a lot of grass, and it's kind of overgrown because nothing's there right now. So these points right here is just to... Um, keep people out of this open space area and um, require them to use the mandated walking, you know, the already ready walking trails that are available. Um, and then these two down here, this is just a path that goes along there. It doesn't connect to anything else. So, again, um, you know, our intent wasn't to stop the public from coming through during daylight hours. It's just to... Um, really provide less access at night, easy access um, from Wallegra and um, from vineyards. So, I have, I have a question. I'm, a, I'm pretty familiar with golf courses, and, and I, is the public permitted on your golf course during the day to walk any of the golf cart paths they wish? I couldn't say for sure the paths, but I don't think it's intended that the golf course itself is going to be open to the public because, as you know, it can hurt the, the greens for people, you know, right. riding bikes and things like that. My question is, we keep pointing to these trails in the golf course. If those are golf cart paths, generally the public is not allowed on Correct. Them, correct? correct. So the public does not have access through the community using the golf course. I think that is correct, they should, yes. They shouldn't have access. They might, but they shouldn't. The, yeah. yeah. Just, I just wanted to make sure I understood if you right. just opened it or not. That was all. That was my question. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let me clarify that. that. That would be by policy, not by gates. You don't have gates over those paths that prevent people from crossing Dark Creek and walking around the golf course, do you, or do you? No. It's not closed off right now. So if you live in Morgan Creek, if you live up close to Vineyard Road, and you live there today, and you can't use the golf course, how do you get to the green belt? Um, which green belt are you talking the, about? The uh, bike trail through the creek. Well, I'll have to default to John. I, all I do is I drive around to the park on the road, park there, and walk, walk. So you don't, you don't cut cross your own community to get to the, to the, get to the bike trail? No, because first of all, they're on the north side. Right. That's yeah. The there's, point. No, there's no there's no bridge except that one spot. Because of the private property, there isn't any access from the north side of Morgan Creek here to the bike trail. You got to get outside the community to get there, right? Other than walking on the golf course paths. Right. Right. Which is, which is crossing private property. So. Right. I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah. Where we are. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Unless you have any, any questions. Any more questions? Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Chris, Let me see. Uh, Chris. Yeah, we were going to challenge Christopher to uh, <laughs> clarify a few things for us here. Chris, before you get started, I have one and question. Let me, let me close the public comment for okay. you. So. Okay. okay. I have one question, Chris. Uh, you may cover it, but are these development, the roads and what have you, are that private property and the golf course itself? 
there's the internal roads to Morgan Creek are private. That's what they were allowed to gate. And there's separate ownership for the golf course. Okay, but they're they're both privately owned. Correct. The golf course and the roads. Okay, now go ahead and show us where the where the pub where the where the public access and where the private access is, I guess. So there there is an internal network of golf cart pass and semi pedestrian pass. And I don't have a map showing what's public and what's private, but my understanding is you, pedestrians can walk on those golf course paths, golf course paths. And looking at the conditions of approval, at 6E, which we we've, are proposing to modify, it says the design of said fencing shall not restrict the access of pedestrians entering or exiting the public trail system. So I'm not sure what they're saying is the public trail system. We do know that the Dry Creek Greenway Trail is public, and I believe the HOA maintains that segment of that trail that goes through here. But I may be wrong. So they may be speaking to that, and we clarified that in our proposed modification to say that those, the pedestrian access should not be impeded from down to dusk. So... Anything they're adding has to be open from dawn to dusk. I can't speak to how uh, automobile gates got approved for the project. That's a long time ago. It's, it's not an item before us today. Uh, connections to adjoining properties. My guess is, since this was an older subdivision, that there wasn't pedestrian access available to connect to the regional trail. Um, I'm not sure here. I, I, the understanding probably was to bring people to Willerga from this neighborhood up and then connect this way. So nothing they're proposing would restrict pedestrian access through the community during the day, during daytime hours. I, I should have noted that I did get one call. Uh, we did notify uh, neighbors 300 feet of, around the boundary of the project site, over 700 notices. One call from this resident here, he lives at the corner of Crowder and Vineyard, and he just wanted to ask questions about, could people still get through here at night? And the answer was no, because it will be electronically laked, uh, locked from the outside. And he said currently he sees uh, people parking here and walking into the community at night. So he's thinking it's younger people coming to a house party and don't want to go through the main gate where they might get questioned. So they're parking out here and walking in. So this would alleviate at least his concern. So there is there's, there's a trail network. There's a question whether all this stuff is private, but we do know members of the public are getting on here to cut through the community. Say, so Chris, um, the black line around the subdivision is not gated. No, that just shows the Morgan Creek community itself. And so where you see the residential areas versus the golf course and the open space, that is, there is a gate around that? There's probably open fencing along the back of these properties, view fencing. So open fencing in the private backyard. That's a metal see-through fence in your track. What they're pro same thing they're proposing along the, the boundaries here. This fencing okay. will be and wrought iron, open yeah. view fencing. So the purpose of the gates is all the gates are adjacent to the uh, residential areas. And so it appears from the surface at least that the purpose of those is at nighttime just to keep people out of the residential areas. Correct. But not uh, limit access to uh, the other areas that are green belt or golf course or whatever. And that's why we, we modified the condition to, to, to specify the gates must be open from dawn to dusk. So right now it just says areas. shouldn't impede pedestrian use. Chris, getting up to that, uh, A, you have A up there, you said people are coming in there. Well, you could have left it on the other one. I was just going to make a comment. So, but if someone were to come in there before dusk, they were parking out there doing whatever, and they walked in for whatever reason, 
to go to a house party if that's what they were going for. They could walk out that gate then Correct. At, at after hours. But the hope is the party starts late and they'd have to come through the, yeah, the know, main I gate. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Good question. Well, does, does gate A access uh, any of the open space areas? No, it's, it's just a, a convenient connection out to Vineyard Road. So this was put in, and I have the picture of this exact location earlier in the presentation. So right here. It's just an easement, maybe 20 feet wide, private property on both sides, Open fencing here, perfect location for a pedestrian gate. So vineyard would be just to the when we're looking below from, this. We're looking from vineyard. Right, looking into the community. So it's just an easy um, pedestrian connection out to vineyard instead of having folks walk down a quarter mile to the main entrance of the community. Chris, what's the height of the uh, gates, the proposed gates? Do you know? Six feet. Six, roughly six feet, so it'll be consistent with what's out there today. Okay, any other further questions? Any questions at all? Or staff? If I'm not hearing questions, thank you, Chris. <laughs> and uh, I'll bring it back to the commission. If you, are, if you have a pleasure of making a motion, go ahead. I just have a comment. I'm, I'm an anti- gated community guy, but when it's all private property and they own the streets and they own the sidewalks and they're taking over, I think it's a little bit different situation and it'd be no different than having a gate at the end of your own private driveway. I, guess. So. I don't see that this is making any real change to the access. Yeah. Uh, into the development, uh, the reasonable reasonable access into the development, in my opinion. Yeah. It sounds like it's only re uh, restricting at least coming in, not getting out, because getting out sounds like it's open all the way, like, as one of the commissioners mentioned, but so it looks like it's just trying to stop people from coming through private property at, at night. At night. Right. And yet you can still walk the whole trail at night. Right, it's open. And uh, whatever, whatever is public property on each side of the creek, right. there's got to be a bandwidth in or something. Mr. Chairman, if we're ready, I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. um, I make a motion that the Planning Commission determine that the project is exempt from CEQA and that we approve a conditional use permit modification number 1844A for the Morgan Creek Plan Residential Development, including the revised fencing exhibit, attachment B, um, these recommendations are subject to the modified conditions of approval set forth in attachment B and the findings below. Second. Okay, any further discussion? With hearing none, we'll go to a roll call. I have a, excuse me, I have a first by Mr. Moss and a second by Mr. Nader. We'll go with Mr. Curry. Yes. Mr. Haber. Yes. Mr. Rokucci. Yes. Mr. Nader. Yes. Mr. Sevison. Yes. Mr. Moss. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Thank you. Okay, motion carries. And uh, this decision is appealable. It's uh, within 10 days, and it costs $581. $581. needs to be uh, submitted to the Community Development Resource Agency building. And uh, with that, uh, you know, this, this one passes. Uh, let me see if there's not... Well, is there anything else? I think we've closed down our agenda. And so not hearing any excitement from any part of the building, we'll say the meeting's closed. Thank you.